this is the first talk I've given since the uh, gender transition announcement. Right. So I'll be talking, I'll be referring as much as I can to um, Chelsea Manning, as Chelsea Manning, using female pronouns. Although we also recognize this is a transition and we're also going to be talking about the campaign and legalities and uh, other um, kind of formal things right now. So we will be referencing Bradley too in kind of past tense and through kind of legal channels. And Chelsea does recognize that we need to, you know, do this at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, we're basically um, doing the best we can in that regard. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just kind of talk about the campaign and then we'll get into, um, you know, the court martial, sentencing, uh, the gender issue, and then kind of how we can support going forward. Um, so Bradley Manning was arrested in May of 2010 um, after a video was released called Collateral, people call it Collateral Murder, it was a videotape of a Apache helicopter gunning down uh, civilians and a couple of Reuters journalists in North Baghdad. Um, after that video was released, Bradley Manning was, was arrested as um, he at the time was suspected of leaking the video. Um, they, uh, they arrested him, put him in confinement in Kuwait, arrested him from a Ford operating base in Iraq to Kuwait. Uh, after that same summer, um, the Iraq war logs and the Afghan war diaries came out, and these um, cables, hundreds of thousands of them, um, basically detailed war crime after war crime, corruption, civilian casualties, cover-ups, backdoor deals, human trafficking. Um, yeah, it's all there. Um, the diplomatic cables came out basically talked about how U.S. and other first world governments conduct diplomacy in a really terrible way. And the Guantanamo files came out, which basically um, talked about how most of the detainees at Guantanamo were either low-level operatives or in innocent and been cleared for release since all the way back to 2003, but because of bureaucracy, they're still being held. Um, so, huge revelations all came out. Um, all attributed to this one whistleblower. Um, Courage to Resist is an organization that has existed since 2004. We've supported war resistors um, all the way back until then. Um, Watada. Watada, Lieutenant Watada, first officer to refuse, first person to refuse uh, publicly, Stephen Funk. Um, there's tons of people. They helped me get out of the Air Force to come to the objector. Um, so, as soon as we realized um, who was being held for these leaks, we jumped on the campaign to support, at the time, Bradley Manning, and we uh, got a steering committee together for people all over the country and around the world, called it the Bradley Manning Support Network, and we immediately started um, fundraising for the Defense Fund tried to find the best lawyer that Bradley wanted at the time. David Coombs was a very experienced ex-military general officer who's done a tremendous job until this point and still doing a tremendous job. So, yeah, first uh, 10 months of um, Private Manning's confinement was in solitary confinement conditions likened to torture, um, forced to be in a cell 23 hours a day, one hour of exercise in a larger cell, forced to stand naked, arbitrarily put on suicide watch, um, had to acknowledge that he was okay every five minutes. That would drive anyone insane for months on end. We uh, launched a huge campaign to end those conditions there was a huge uh, petition online, almost, or actually over three quarters of a million people signed it. We did protests all over the place. The UN Rapporteur on Torture Juan Mendez at an inquiry, tried to start an investigation, was stonewalled by the Obama administration and the military. And uh, we also crashed a Obama fundraising, um, campaign fundraising breakfast in San Francisco in April. Um, 
the next day after that happened, they actually transferred <coughs> the time Bradley to Leavenworth, Kansas. So we uh, that was a big victory for us, um, relative victory that uh, we were able to get um, Trevor Manning out of those conditions to put in Leavenworth um, from Quantico into gen from solitary confinement into general population. So. That was uh, 2011, I think. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, yeah the campaign just kept going on and on until June of 2013 of this year. Over three years after now Chelsea <laughs> was um, arrested, so it, it took the military's. Um, law for speedy trials 120 days under the uniform code of military justice that's what it is how many 120 days so this was over a thousand um, days until the court martial was eventually brought the, the initial charges were espionage aiding the enemy theft of government property when the verdict came down the government really couldn't prove that um, Chelsea aided the enemy, and uh, that was another big victory for us, because that was life in prison, um, you know, without parole, and plus 135 years, something ridiculous. So, like I said, that was a big victory for us, aiding the enemy. It was also a big victory for journalists, um, and freedom of the press, people who might you know, want to give information, report on information, might be charged with the same thing. So um, that was a very, very good thing. Um, but on the contrast, espionage was equally ridiculous and very much still harmful for um, media, people, activists, journalists, and freedom of speech and government accountability advocates. So. Um, Bradley Manning was sentenced to 35 years after being convicted on espionage and theft of government property. So after that uh, conviction, there was, um, actually I'll just take this moment to read the statement that um, Chelsea put out after the conviction came down or the sentencing came down, as I say. And, um, and this is, I don't know, a lot of people have probably heard this statement, but I'll just read it again. It's very telling of Manning's mentality at the time and, and why this all happened. The decisions I made in 2010 were made out of a concern for my country and the world that we live in. Since the tra tragic events of 9-11, our country has been at war We've been at war with an enemy that chooses not to meet us in any traditional battlefield, and due, to this, and due to this fact, we've had to alter our methods of combating the risks posed to us in our way of life. I initially agreed with these methods, and chose to volunteer to defend my country. I, it was not until I was in Iraq and reading secret military reports on a daily basis that I started to question the morality of what, of what we were doing. It was at this time I realized that, in our efforts, to meet the risk posed to us by the enemy, we had forgotten our humanity. We consciously elected to devalue human life both in Afghanistan and Iraq. When we engaged those that we perceived were the enemy, we sometimes killed innocent civilians. Whenever we killed innocent civilians, instead of accepting responsibility for our conduct, we elected to hide behind the veil of national security and classified information in order to avoid any public accountability. In our zeal to kill the enemy, we internally debated the definition of torture. We held individuals at Guantanamo for years without due process. We inexplicably turned a blind eye to torture and executions by the Iraqi government. And we summed countless other acts in the name of our war on terror. Patriotism is often the cry extolled when morally questionable acts were advocated by those in power. When these cries of patriotism drawn out drown out any logically based dissension, it usually 
It is usually the American soldier that is given the order to carry out some ill-conceived mission. Our nation has similar dark moments for the virtues of democracy. The Trail of Tears, the Dred Scott decision, McCarthyism, the Japanese American internment camps, to mention a few. I am confident that many of the actions since 9-11 will one day be viewed in a similar light. Focuses we have going forward, definitely supporting Chelsea um, in her situation, trying to get that hormone, very necessary hormone therapy that she needs, supporting her in every way we can from the position we're at. We're immediately jumping into an appeals process. Uh, her lawyer, David Coombs, is making those filings now, and we will be putting lots of pressure on and working towards that appeal. Um, I think it, I think it's up to a couple years for that to, um, that's the maximum limit for it to go through, so, but. We think what's the appeal is based on, what would they <clears throat> use as uh, the argument? Right, so there's lots of things. I don't <clears throat> know every single one, but um, this uh, trial has been full of, full of holes. Uh, like I talked about lack of speedy trial, confinement conditions, but in the court martial itself as well, the judge allowed the prosecution to present evidence um, and change charges after the defense arguments were closed, so there was no chance to rebuttal. Um, things like that. Overwhelming bias towards the prosecution, allowing all their witnesses and hardly any defense witnesses. Appeals process. We're also uh, filing a official application for presidential pardon. Um, that's going to go through on Tuesday. So we're making a big deal out of that. We have a new website. If you click on the petition, it goes right to the White House petition that uh, we filed for private many. And we have almost 21,000 signatures so far, and we're going to need another 79,000 uh, within the next month, which we think is doable. Yeah. But it will be a tr uh, you know tremendous show of support, and the White House will have to. They'll be in a position where they're going to be forced to respond to that. So um, we're really pushing that. So if people can help pushing that, that would be awesome. I'm guessing that's going out to the email list. Uh, it is. It has, and uh, we're trying to get lots of organizations to send it out as well, and, and people. So um, please let folks know. Um, also, I'm going to play this video next, but before I do, um, we are also putting a lot of pressure on the convening authority in this court martial. In the military court martial, there's uh, convening authority. In this case, it's General Buchanan out of Fort McNair. They can, after a sentencing, immediately jump in, um, mitigate or grant clemency to that person. Uh, there's still a window right now, I think, uh, that general has to respond within the next couple weeks whether or not he's gonna go in and reduce the sentence or grant clemency. So we're bringing lots of petitions to him. We're putting pressure on by making phone calls and sending letters and whatnot. So.